makes a sound that loud. That isn't something living. We're going to leave cameras all throughout the house and we're gonna leave. Yeah, we have been hit with all sorts since we've been here. Look at the camera. Camera. Hello and welcome to another episode of Ghost Theory. We have come to an amazing time capsule location. We have been here a while waiting for it to get dark, um, listening out for some sounds, getting some cinematics and setting up some equipment. First of all, as ever, let's have a look around. This place literally has everything left behind it. The guy who lived here, I think must have died a couple of years ago, possibly even in this house. We don't know for 100% fact, but um, all the stuff is still here as if they still live here. But he certainly doesn't, which um, we'll be able to show why when we get to the other side of the house. Okay. Um, first things first, there is power. Um, it's just the most ridiculous thing, isn't it, when you find yeah. an abandoned house. Who's paying for the power? This was kind of, this is a funny room because it looks like it was a kid's room, but also it's got an old man's hat on there. But it's almost like this is stuff from his childhood. Benjamin Button, he <laughs> was old but young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might have found out his name was Benjamin as well. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, tax disc from a car from 2008. But it's like I say, it's got like kind of old children's toys. I mean, this is actually a remote control tank. Oh, that'd be amazing if that still worked. And what year is that from? They actually made it out of metal as well. Wow. I mean, that shows how old that is. <laughs> um, these books look like they've been set up for urban exploring, but. Um, in here, or is that the lid for that? Yeah, this is not an abandoned house without a singer sewing machine, is it? No, we get them in so many. Cover that up. Um, there's some stuff over there as well. Lots of, there's lots of baby pictures, mm. like old baby pictures, as in the pictures are of babies that are now old pictures, not old babies. <laughs> Benjamin Button comes to mind. <laughs> Benjamin Button here. I'm going to turn this off. If we go into here, this is a creepy ass corridor connecting all the rooms. It is a bungalow. Um, you can see that there are a shitload of cobwebs and all the wallpaper is peeling. So this has not been sort of looked after for a very long time. I haven't looked at the bathroom. Well, we got told off in the last episode for looking in the bathroom, so. Okay, well, there's, there's the bathroom. I won't show you the toilet. I'm going to show it anyway. Just to protest. Look, I'm getting all three cameras on it. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> oh, wow. That is creepy. I mean, clearly, the main bedroom before the gentleman was moved into the living room for care. Yeah. Um, oh, look, I mean, old trunks. You've got these pictures as well. They, uh, and they, they actually seem very religious, and on that one especially. I wonder if there's one behind it that... Yeah, okay. So I, w I wonder if they were religious. Yep. What's, what... What's that noise? Other than the, like, the M42 out there. Can you hear that? She sounds like someone's in that room. What the hell? I mean, there isn't. Yeah. Should we just look in here now? We're in here. Mm. And again, more signs of an older person living here. I mean, they didn't even get to put the washing up away. It's just unbelievable still got washing in the washing machine. They didn't even get the time to take the washing out. It's just That's, insane. Yeah. 
Still sugar in the bowl. That actually looks like they were about to make a cup of tea and something happened. <clears throat> well, they got like the tea and the coffee or whatever out. Yeah. Spoon inside here, but nothing inside it. The sugar's open and everything. It literally is as if someone's just started yeah. to make a cup of tea and then that was it. Felt bad and... Yeah. What an absolutely amazing place. Oh wow, look at all these photos too. So we've actually figured that this guy would have been a farmer. They actually had their own business. Yeah. Um, it was his name, surname, which we won't say, and sons. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, but these are actually pictures of the house, look. I presume these are their old cars and tractors and things. That's amazing. Oh my word. Look at that. That's him, stood here. Wow. Just where I can hear the noise as well. Look at this. Oh yeah. It is the guy. The house has barely changed. It hasn't, has it? Isn't that just an amazing th image? You know, um, the room we're about to go in, I think, actually has the Polaroid camera um, that these were taken with. Wow. I think it's in there. Oh, yeah. Right there, set up on the table. I wonder if it still works. Again, more, more photos of, of them at the property as well. They cared a lot for this place. Now, main living room. Um, and I've got a feeling that that was definitely the deathbed. I don't, I, you can't tell. It's just a feeling, but it's set up the way, it, you know, we obviously can never know for sure if someone actually died here. Because um, it might have been a case of that something happened and they were rushed off to hospital really fast. Yeah. They might not have actually been here, but the fact that everything is still left like this makes you think that there wasn't a family. Mm. So the only people that would have been caring here would have been carers. But he, we might find something here actually which has to do with the carers yeah and it might be the fact that he we might find that he refused care and all sorts of things yeah and maybe didn't want people here and he might have wanted to die here alone a lot of people do yeah some people just it might have been that his wife also died here and wanted to die in the same house it's a brutal subject but it is just how it happens isn't it do you think that they were his children or potentially his wife or something? i i don't know because obviously i th I think that, that's definitely newer, the way the photo is developed. I think that was, could have been his wife. It could be a wife and child, and that's why they're like this, but then yeah. if they had a child, then why is this house like this? Well, there's a picture over there that I've, wait, that I've seen of someone graduating, and that could be one of the sons. Well, because... there's another child here. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, here, they were married, or at least together, 50 years together. Yeah. At um, University of West England. So I reckon that was one of the kids. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know, it's, it's interesting. That, that's the same person, that one and this. Yeah. That's the, the child. And that could be the same person that graduated there. They do look quite similar, to actually, yeah. And then this on their wedding day. Perhaps. Oh, that's the sun. Is it? I think that's the sun, yeah. So maybe. Well, it's impossible to know. Let's sort of ask. Yeah, that's We can try and get questions answered that way. Um, I just want to get a closer look at this because I find this. It's harrowing, isn't it? Yeah. It's just in. in <laughs> You can't explain it, can you? When you walk into a room like this, it's mm. abandoned. 
I mean, it's just how is there just the DVA, DVLA stuff just there? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like they just, with the click of a finger, just disappeared. Became non existent. Yeah. Or are they? Well, <laughs> I guess that's, that's for us the, to find out. That's our question, isn't it? Yeah. So we were, we were sat down in the living room for maybe an hour to an hour and a half, just waiting for rush hour to go, waiting for all the traffic to die down. Then we started hearing some noises, we started recording, and then this happened. traffic to stop which it doesn't seem to be but we've been waiting about an hour now and we're not really set up but we we've just heard some really strange noises the traffic is just really annoying We've been here in all sorts since we've been here. But then it just started to like ramp up. to make a noise to, to communicate with us.
knock in the corner there. Can you copy me? Honestly, I don't think anything has changed. What was the guy's name? Ah, oh, Ronald. His name was Ronald. Oh. Or Ron, I think people would have called him. Ron, are you here with us? that sound you hear that mm. is it now back in there Hello? We are calling out to the spirit of the man or the woman who used to live here. I'm getting screaming house vibes. Mm, yeah, I know, that gives it's me the, chills. Yeah. If that door now doesn't open. Oh, well, why does it smell so different in here now? Oh, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's musky. It smells, yeah, it smells like sweat and. It's warm. That's really odd. It's warm in here. Yeah. Like, we've been sat in here for a long time as well, and that did not. Well, one, it hasn't been caused by us, and two, didn't smell like that earlier. Okay. So far, we've been getting some really interesting activity. So we thought that we would try something we haven't done in about 11 years. Right, so this is something we've never done on this channel before. We actually did this about a decade ago when we first started exploring and doing paranormal videos. Um, now, a lot of people have also asked us to do this in the recent year or two. Um, we're going to leave cameras all throughout the house and we're gonna leave. So we've got one facing this room. We also have another camera facing the kitchen it's just in the little hatch. We've also got the zoom here, which was very popular in our last investigation, actually. People really like that. It's essentially, hopefully, going to pick up any uh, EVPs that are in this room. And this is obviously by the bed that he potentially died in, we don't know. Um, but that's the reason why that's there. There's also another camera in the room where we think the door may have shut. Don't know what caused it, but if it happens again, we may capture it with that camera. And there's also a camera right down the end of the building, uh, facing throughout the corridor. But it's all to be able to hear, hopefully, any sounds that happen in this building when we're not here. Yeah. So the idea of this is that our presence may stop any potential activity from happening. If there are spirits there, they might want to just get on with their day. It also stops any noise pollution from us, so we thought it's a really good experiment to do. What we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna head outside. Uh, we're gonna probably spend about 40 to an hour outside. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna leave it all running, and um, let's go. Yeah, let's just go get frozen to death outside. Yeah. <laughs> oh, another thing I wanted to do is we actually just bought this, which is an EMF pump. Makes a slightly irritating sound. How'd you turn it on? Oh, there we go. 
An EMF pump is essentially just designed to pump out some electromagnetic frequencies into the air and essentially give the spirits more energy. We always use K2 meters or sometimes use K2 meters and that picks up the electromagnetic frequency which supposedly the spirits can either speak through or that is them as they are that form of energy potentially. So we thought maybe if we use this and put it in, in one of the rooms, it can pump out the energy into the room and then the cameras will pick up on the activity from the energy that that gives the spirits. Now, one thing to also point out as well, it's nowhere near the K2 meter. It only pumps out energy maybe 30, 40 centimeters away from it. So it would never ever affect any of the equipment that we've got in the room or the building at the time. I'm gonna leave that in there just in case it was potentially something that moved this door and then Leave that like that so it has the potential to move. Uh, just, you know, even if it's wind. Okay. I am starting to get hypothermic now, I should go back in. Got to be in over an hour, shall we? Yeah. Let's just see what happens. What's that for? The pump. Oh, yeah. Where is that, actually? In here. Or well, do we just stop everything recording then and just... What we could do is call out now. So you can actually see by these shots that the experiment was pretty successful. We did catch some amazing stuff. However, it doesn't mean that everything that we caught was paranormal. Some of it could be explained. We also have absolutely no idea if the EMF pump actually made any difference. Thinking back, what we should have done is did an hour with the EMF pump and then an hour without it to see if the activity changes or if any differences in what's happening inside the building. It's just something we can try again in the future. Overall, we seem to pick up on a lot of banging and movements, and you could even hear a voice that came from the living room, which was also picked up on the Zoom.
Okay. Are there any spirits here who wish to communicate with us? The fridge is on. Was it on before? It must have been. Could it explain some of the noises, maybe? Hmm. That's what I was thinking. But, um, like, I don't know. The Big Bang. Is that like no, fridges? That, yeah. Or ice. Maybe it's ice falling. Well, no, it's like a fucking iceberg. Yeah. <laughs> What was the name? Ron. Ron, are you here? Was there just knocking noises in that room? It was just boom, boom, deeper in here, I'm sure it's certain of it. Wasn't me, because it's concrete floor. It does noise, isn't it? It's that I'm going mad. Hello? Ron, is that you? What's that? Sounds like... I'm not fucking moving. I'm not fucking moving. What do you mean, I'm not moving? Look at the camera. Camera. Oh, fuck. It fucking fell. Still recording. <laughs> Should we play it back? Yeah. Okay, let's just show you what that was on. Right, it's, it's not exactly the steadiest thing on earth. Okay, yeah. but that's been in here for an hour. What we heard in the living room, we actually thought was the sound of the camera falling off the door. Obviously we didn't put that together at the time because it was only once we saw it on the floor did we put the sound and that together. But it was actually only during the edit where we realized that the camera had actually fallen off way before and during the time that we were outside. So the camera was quite stable on the handle, but it wasn't the most stable it could have been. So there is a possibility that it did just slide off over time. Believe it or not, we actually had no idea that the camera had fallen off while we're outside. We come in and we actually look down that corridor, but it is a completely pitch black corridor. The camera only has little infrared lights on it. It was, it was actually the bigger light that we have, which is, makes it even more miraculous that we, we didn't see it. But it is literally just these little red dots to us. It, it obviously, unless you're looking through a night vision camera, you can't see any light coming off it at all. It was only once Elliot looked out down to the end of the corridor after we had heard that sound, did he notice that the red lights were on the floor and no longer on the handle. And that's when we kind of put everything together, but we were technically wrong. It didn't happen at that point, it happened before, but even so, the camera falling off is still quite incredible. What was that? Dun -dun. I don't know, but it was right to my left. It sounded like the bed moving. But look at that.
to shut this because of the sheer amount of noises coming through there. Do you know, I haven't noticed a car go past for ages. No. It's like the whole time was just like in silence. Are you here with us now? Can you use your voice? There's a spirit with us. We ask you to make contact just while we are here in this house. We've come searching for answers about life after death. Can you touch the black device that we've left on your table? So I really enjoyed this investigation and it's one of my favourites for a long time. A lot of it is very weird, it can be explained, and I, but I think it's kind of that middle ground type of um, investigation because it's weird, things are happening, can it be explained? We're a bit mixed in the middle because a lot of it can, perhaps a lot of it can't, especially at the beginning when we were startled by very loud noises coming from the kitchen. I think in terms of urban exploring, this has got to be one of the best locations we've done. It's incredibly harrowing, a really upsetting location. There's clearly been lots of misery in that house, but before that was a really nice, happy, loving home when you look through some of the photos. Now, in terms of paranormal, I think the vast majority of the sounds can be explained by the fact that there are potentially rats in the loft. I think one of the sounds that we heard when we were in the corridor and I jumped, I think that was just a rat in the loft. Um, and then you've got the sound of the, the fridge making lots of noises. That fridge has been on for years with no maintenance. And I think when you just combine everything together, there's a high potential for some of it to be paranormal, but I think actually a lot of it can be explained just through the random appliances and creatures living within the house.